Hello, this is Jordan from Lovely Loops, and I'm going to be showing you how to use these calligraphy rulers designed by Aquino da Silva. There are two versions, the engrosser ruler, which can be used for copper plate calligraphy, and then the spencerian, which is used for spencerian calligraphy. So the difference between the two, there are two main differences. First is the angle. So for the engrosser ruler, you have a 55 degree slant over here. And for Spencerian, you have a 52 degree slant. And that just corresponds to the angle of the script that you're writing with. The other difference is the X height. So for the engrosser ruler, you have a range of three to six millimeters. I'm sorry, three to seven millimeters. So each of these rows here corresponds to a different height going from three to seven. And on the Spencerian, since it's written at a smaller scale, your X heights range from one millimeter to three millimeters. So this one millimeter block corresponds to this column. The last one, three millimeters, corresponds to this column right here. So all of these dots might be confusing and these lines here, but I'm going to show you how to use both of these. So the purpose of these rulers is to help you easily and quickly draw guidelines to use for calligraphy. I use them on black paper, so that's what I'll be demonstrating. If you're practicing with something like marker paper, which is semi-transparent, you can easily put it on top of a printed guide sheet and see right through it so you don't have to draw pencil lines. Or if you're using other light colored paper, you could use a light pad and let the light shine through so that you can see the printed guide sheet. But if you're using black paper, it's not as easy to see, or it could be impossible to see guidelines through it. So that's where these rulers are helpful. And I'll start with the engrosser ruler. The other thing you'll need is a pencil. I use this mechanical pencil because it has this sharp tip, something that's gonna be able to fit through these holes so you can draw the lines. And then you'll also need a flat edge, something like another ruler. I'm going to be using this ruler. It's actually a gliding ruler. So this could be used to create lines, but it's a lot quicker with something like this. So whatever your straight flat edge is, you'll want to make sure that you can hold it down pretty sturdy when you are using the calligraphy ruler. So you'll start by choosing what you want your X height to be. Let's just choose five millimeters since it's right in the middle. And after you choose your height, you'll just ignore everything else. So I'm going to completely ignore all of these dots in the three and the four millimeter and all of these dots over here. The only dots I'm looking at are in this section right here. So in copper plate calligraphy, the X height refers to where most of your lowercase letters will lie in between. And you can see here that this has an X. So that is going to be where our X height is. So I'll start by showing you how to draw the X height using the five millimeter. Okay, so I'm making sure that my ruler right here is pressed down firmly with my left hand. And then again, going to the five millimeter column, I'm gonna start by putting my pencil in the hole that corresponds to the top of the X. And I'm gonna put it in and then press down and slide across. So I drew a straight line going across. If you wanted, you could go there and back to make it even more visible. Now I'm gonna move down one space. So I started on the X here in the five millimeter. I'm gonna move down one space and do the same thing. I'm gonna mark this as the X height right here, just to avoid confusion later on. So you wanna make sure that your flat edge isn't moving around because if it does, then your lines will get off. Mine moved a tiny bit when I just drew that X. So I'm just gonna make sure that my dots are lined up with the lines that I've already drawn. Okay, so now I'm gonna just go above the X height and below the X height and use the dots that are in this left column. So keeping my flat edge straight, I'm gonna go across and then move up in the column and go across again. Then I'll go below the X height, go across, and then come back. So here you can see now we have the lines that are usually used for copper plate calligraphy. We have the baseline and the header line that define our X height. So that's a B and an H for base and header. Then we have a first ascender line, 1A and the second ascender line, 2A. Then we have a 
first descender and a second descender. So those corresponded to all of these dots in this row. We have an extra one on each X height, but since we already used the ones on the left, it doesn't matter which one you use, you can use either one. There's just an extra dot in that row. But then you can see that there's another one right here. So this line right here would be used. I'm gonna draw it, but I'm gonna make it dashed. So I'm gonna pick up my pencil every so often to draw the dashed version. And then we have another extra dot down here, which I'll do the same thing. Okay, so those are helpful if you have a different ratio for your script besides using the second ascender and second descender for your loops. I'll show an example after I show you how to draw the 55 degree slant. So since I already have my ruler set up and it's parallel, you, this is important to make sure that your flat edge is still parallel to your guidelines when you do the 55 degree slant. But I'm gonna trace over the edge of this. So I'm gonna keep my hand on this ruler and then also put part of my hand on this ruler to keep it steady and trace along the edge. Okay, and this is giving me a 55 degree slant, which is what you use for copper plate calligraphy. And then you can continue going all the way across. So now that I've drawn all those guidelines, I'm gonna move this ruler and show you how they would be used. So for your X height, this is where Letters like lowercase a would rest. And then you have your second ascender and second descender. Those would be used for letters with loops like L. So the second ascender, that's how you would make the L. And then a descender would be like the letter G would go down to the second descender. But if you prefer a different ratio and you want your loops to be not quite that tall, that's where this second, this extra dot comes in handy. You could draw this as a solid line, I just do it as a dashed line just to show you that it ends up being halfway between the first as ascender and second ascender. So you could still keep your letter that fits in the X height, the same height, but then maybe you want your loops on top and bottom to just be a little bit shorter and that will change your ratio. Instead of being a two to one ratio, then it becomes a one and a half to one. So two to one, meaning here we went up two spaces compared to the one for the X height. And here we're just going up one and a half spaces. So this would be two to one and one and a half to one. And it does just give a little different look to your letters because the loop size is different. So just to summarize, using the engrosser ruler, you get one line of text out of this one section on the ruler because you have the X height and then ascender and descender. So if you wanted to draw another line of text below this, then you would need to get your this ruler back out and do the same process, making sure that you that the top dot that you're using for your ascender is at least below whatever you're using for your descender just so that there's enough room and you also want to make sure that it's parallel so you can maybe use the top edge of the ruler and align it with one of the guidelines make sure that your flat edge matches it i actually need to shift it down just a little bit but then you would do the same process make sure to use the same x height so i'm using five millimeters and then Go back and forth, just going down this column of dots like this. So my X height for this row is right here. And then you could continue the slant lines from the ones that you had before. The slant lines don't actually have to be spaced perfectly evenly apart. If you are using a ruler at the bottom, you could check to see that it's every however many increments. So that is how you would line a copper plate guide sheet. If you want to make them all evenly spaced, then you would just make sure that this top line was actually perfectly aligned with the descender of this line. You wouldn't have to draw it twice. 
Okay, so now let's look at the Spencerian ruler. Besides the angle being different, the X height, like I said before, is smaller. Because it's smaller, you actually get to fit more X heights within the ruler, which makes it a little bit faster to draw more lines. Instead of drawing this whole line, shifting it down, and then drawing this whole line, you can do more than one with this ruler. So another difference that you'll see after I draw these lines is the distance between the ratio of the dots. Okay, so here let's use the 2.5 millimeter size that will correspond to the fourth column, which is this one right here, so I can ignore everything else. So I'm going to use this column of dots. I'll just go down, down the column, and for each one go across. And I usually find it helpful to immediately draw the slant line just so that I know that my ruler is still parallel because I just finished drawing the guideline. So I'm just going to draw in my slant lines now. Again, they don't have to be perfectly evenly spaced. Just to give you a guide across your page for your slant line. This does take some practice to be able to do this. Now, if you were drawing it without holding it steadily and it moved as you were drawing it, then obviously it would not be along the slant. Okay, so I'll just erase that one. If you want, you can actually erase the lines wherever you're stopping. If it bothers you, if they're not all the same height, you can erase them. Or if they're not all the same length. And that would go for this side too. Okay. So I'm just going to bring back my Spencerian ruler so that we can see. And this is something that might be helpful to do while you still have it in line with what you've drawn. Okay, so I'm going to shift it back down so that all of these dots are back aligned with the ones that I drew. So where the black square is, that's what corresponds to the X height. So I'm going to draw in my X's. So the first one would be right here. The second one would be right here. So we actually get three X heights from this ruler. So now that I have drawn these lines, I'm going to show you the other difference. So for each X height, we have one ascender line and one descender line. Then this line actually becomes the ascender for the next X height, and then we have a descender. So for copper plate or for the engrosser ruler, we had two lines above and two lines below each X height. But here, instead of drawing the this line, the first ascender line, we just skip it. And all we do is draw the X height and then this ascender. So the ratio here is still one to two. So this distance here, you could fit two X heights in right here. But since we're at a smaller scale, especially if you were doing like the one millimeter one, that would be a lot of lines. So you can get away with just having the X height and then the line above it. So this, for example, would fit letters like A in the X height, and then L would go up to that line, and then G would go below to that line. Then you would start over the next line of text right here where the next X height was and then just continue down. Okay, so let me just make a couple more markings here. This is a 55 degree slant. This is a 52 degree slant. For this one, the X height was 2.5 millimeters. And then on the engrosser ruler, we used the middle column, which was five millimeters. I had one more bonus tip to share with you when using these rulers. So showing you with the Spencerian ruler, I'm going to align the 2.5 millimeter 
lines again. I'm just gonna quickly go back and forth and make a row of these. And this tip I'm about to tell you will be really helpful if you want to use a lot of lines. So for example, if you're trying to line an entire paper, more than just writing one line of text. Okay, so that's one set of lines. I'm gonna draw just one of the 52 degree slant lines here. I'll show you how to make the 52 degree slants faster in a second. Okay, so next I'm gonna slide my ruler down. And if you look at the ruler, there's this black horizontal line that goes across the first row of dots. And you want that line to line up with the bottom line that you just finished drawing. So since you can see through the ruler, you can line it up with the bottom of the line you just drew. I recommend lining it up holding it securely and then moving your ruler to it. And then you can just continue and draw another set of lines. And now I'm at the bottom. So instead of going through and then drawing this 52 degree slant all the way across, and then I would have to go back up and do it all the way across here in two stages. A really neat trick is to flip this ruler over. So I'm keeping my this ruler parallel to the bottom line, but I'm gonna flip the ruler over like this and then line up the slant line to the edge of my ruler. So if we were drawing with it like this, I'm just going to flip it over and then align this edge with my flat edge like this. You can see, that it perfectly lines up with the slant line that we drew here already and with the one we drew here, but you have a much longer line to trace. So I can go across all of these lines at once instead of having to do it in two separate stages like I would have had to do before when it was rotated the other way. So that makes it really easy if you are doing lots of lines on a paper just to have the longer edge to trace. And the last tip is always make sure to mark your X heights because it can get confusing with all of these lines as you're writing. So for the Spencerian one, it's always the, the, smallest, um, the smallest gap between the two lines is always the X height because of that ratio of one to two to one with the Spencerian ruler. So I hope you enjoyed that little bonus tip of how to make the slant lines even quicker.